We're at the Sun and Ski location on Royal Lane off 35 in Dallas here with a couple of friends of mine, Garrick from Dallas Off-Road Biking Association or DORBA. And uh, if you like off-road biking, you know, we call it mountain biking, but there's really not mountains here, so I guess off-road biking is more appropriate. But their website, dorba.org, is amazing for all the different trails and hiking trails also in the area. And Stan is from Sun and Ski Sports. We want to talk about a couple of different things here. First of all, if you're kind of getting new to this sport, some gear that you may want to think about on top of a bicycle that you should probably, uh, yeah. you know, consider. Uh, can I start with this one here? Yes. I think <laughs> this is so great because especially when it gets hot, uh, Garrett, do you use a Camelback? What do you bring for your hydration while you're riding? Yes, I use a Camelback, the three liter version. I like a lot of water. Yeah. Especially in the summer. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, you can actually, you don't have to stop to get down to your water bottle. You can just have this and be sucking on it. You're right, super easy to get to and uh, really convenient. I highly recommend this. <laughs> hydration. Hydration, very <laughs> important. Very Especially important. when we get into the hotter months, you know, we're right around the corner from that also. That's true. All right. Uh, what else, Stan, is some of the people should consider? Well, I've kind of brought the essentials out here. I think it's very, very important. Keep your noggin, yes, you know, uh, safe right there. Uh, there's a really a lot of good technology uh, in some of the helmets that are out there. Some of them are specific for your size. Some are universal. Uh, but some of the new technology is what we call MIPS. So this, it basically would stop the rotation if you were to go down and fall. So it's the idea of these tabs breaking loose and hopefully saving you from a concussion. So which is very, very important. You already talked about hydration. Two simple ways, you've got a water bottle. This one's actually um, insulated. So you can put ice in this and keep you pretty cool for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half in 100 degree heat. And then you do have this, which allows you to carry some things. Instead of on your bike, you would actually carry them in your hydration pack. Uh, while you're getting uh, hydration. Gloves, protect your hands, protect your knuckles, those kind of things. Uh, eye protection, there's all sorts of uh, eye protection, uh, but very, very important. And then the shorts themselves, you want to be comfortable. You can see these have vents. Uh, it's also got a liner on the inside with padding. Um, very, very important. And then you don't want to get stuck out on the trail by yourself and you don't have a way to get home. So carry a tube, a little bag, uh, a little tool kit, way to change your uh, flat. Even if you don't know how to change the flat, somebody can help you if you have the tools, right? Kind of kind of like your car. Uh, this one has CO2, which helps you get out of there a little quicker. We also have an option where it's just a pump. Um, uh, you can patch up your, your tube. Um, and then just things to keep your uh, bike running. I think we're gonna talk about maintenance later. Lube on the chain, cleaning your bike, those kind of things. These are what I would call the essentials. Let me ask you this, Garrett, if someone's getting into the sport, going out to, uh, and we'll talk about some of our favorite places to go, what are some of the etiquette or some of the things that you, you know, look for when you're out on the trails, you know, when there's other riders, especially some, there might be some guy that's twice as fast as you. This happens to me all the time. I find guys that are much more experienced, women much more experienced than I am, kids much more experienced than I am, and they're passing me and stuff like that. What's some of the etiquette that, uh, that kind of people should follow when they're out there on the trails? Well, it's always a good idea. A lot of people like to use a bell to let somebody know that they're there when you're coming up on somebody to pass. Uh -huh. uh, if they'll, usually if you'll hear the bell, the people will know to move over. Kind of our standard procedure is to pull over to the right if someone's passing you. And if you don't have a bell and you do need to pass someone, then usually the procedure is as you're coming up on them, let them know you're there, tell them that you want to pass, and then say on your left. Uh -huh. And then we usually pass on the left when the people pull over to the right. And just don't crowd people and preferably, you know, wait till there's a little bit of a wider spot and don't don't run people off the trail. Hey, every, everybody who's ever passed me, and I get passed a lot, they always are so polite. They're like, hey, thank you very much. You know, as I pull over to let them pass, because I don't want to, you know, keep some guy on my tail. Uh, people are so friendly when they pass you. They're like, hey, thank you very much, because you do both of you a favor. Probably 99.9% .9 of yeah. the people are very friendly. You always hear about the one guy that wasn't, <laughs> that was invariably, but uh, learning it for all of it's them. Really a, it's really a, a good community. Most of them are happy to see everybody out on the trail. So yeah. it's, they are, are very friendly. Like you said, they do help out. Often if you bring your own tube and at least you have a tube to repair your flat, somebody will usually right. come by and help you with tools or a pump or something because yeah. most of the experienced riders already have a, a lot of that equipment with them. So. Yeah. So uh, something else uh, that I didn't know, I didn't know what the phrase meant, but I, I, single track, that means basically it's one way on the trail for most trails, correct? Yes, and it's a single track basically made for one bike at a time. It's not a double track like a Jeep road, basically. Uh -huh. So that, that's an important thing is when you get to the trail, 
to find out which direction, you know, where the trail starts and what direction everybody's starting at and going so you don't end up going, you know, the wrong way and run into everybody. Most, most trails have directional signage and if you'll go to the trailhead at most trails there's usually a map and then there will be a place that kind of shows you the, the direction of each different loop on the trail and additional information about it but mainly with an arrow to tell you where to start yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty simple. Now, one of the things that people tell me all the time is they're surprised when they get started in the sport is how many trails there are in Dallas-Fort Worth. There's tons of them and if you go to your website, dorba.org, there's just a whole list of them and each like site might have five or six different options for you to travel on of different skill levels. Uh, do you have a couple that are your favorites? I'm more over on the west side of town, so some of my preference is usually Knob Hills uh, over on Grapevine Lake and then also uh, Horseshoe Trail on Grapevine Lake. Uh, some of the other ones are real popular, River Legacy in Arlington, and probably the most popular trail in the Metroplex is North Shore out of Grapevine Lake. It's it's a really nice trail, beautiful lake views. I believe there's 23 miles of trail out there. Is that like uh, like 12 miles out, 12 miles back? Or? No, it's a, it's a long series of loops, seven okay. different loops that loop back together. Oh, okay. And if you do the east side, it's a little bit smoother. It's not quite as technical and it's a little bit faster riding. If you do the west side, it's a little more sandy, rocks, climbing, a little more uh -huh. technical. So it's a, it's a good mixed trail for all varieties of riders. Stan, what are your favorites of town? Well, I, I've lived in the Metroplex for a long time, but I also lived outside the Metroplex, and I don't know how if we know how blessed we are to have as much trail as we have, but some of my favorites, Boulder, because uh -huh. it's a little mix of everything, climbing, descending, flats, uh -huh. uh, River Legacy, I'm actually doing a night ride out there tonight with a bunch of guys, um, fast, twisty, yeah. but it's easy beginner, but there's also some challenging areas in yeah. that as well, but um, those are probably two of my favorites around here, Boulder and um, River Legacy. I like uh, Rowlett Creek Preserve, which mm -hmm. is kind of in the Garland area, and I see a lot of families out there. And you know, a lot of these trails also have hikers out there too. And Rowlett Creek Preserve has a lot of hikers. And usually the hikers are, are going in one direction, so you see them coming, and the cyclists are coming in another. But that's a great one for beginners and families. Uh, my wife and I go out there quite often. Um, and the other one that I really like is out in Weatherford called Quanta Hills. And that's kind of where I got reintroduced to the sport out there. And uh, I think that's a great place also. Um, a you must like hilly. climbing. There's a lot of hills. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I, I like that because it reintroduced me to the sport. Yeah, so I, I kind of, it's, it's kind of like my home place. <laughs> but I, I kind of like, you know, just to cruise and go fast. And I'm more into that aspect of it, the climbing. And the, because I, my bike's so well, I don't have front shocks. So I don't like that. So I like to keep it as smooth as possible. We can help you out. <laughs> yeah, so that's one reason that we're here today. But anyway, Garrett, uh, by the way, uh, I want to give you a side of plug also because uh, Dorba, uh, Dallas Off-Road Biking Association, you guys have built and maintained a lot of these trails here in the Metroplex. Yes, we've been around since 1988, so a little over 30 years. And it was uh, started, uh, initially a group was to kind of do some riding and put on some races and then they quickly turned into maintaining and building trails. Yeah. So now we maintain uh, 23 trails in the, in the North Texas area. Some of them as far as we also maintain cross timbers, which is almost into Oklahoma. Yeah. And we've got a couple other trails, hopefully in the works coming up soon. And you see all those listed on our website, but there's also, you know, the other trails, there's a lot of other trails in the Metroplex. We have the Fort Worth Mountain Bike Association has two trails and a third one coming online. The Weatherford Mountain Bike Club, yeah. which does Quanta Hills, they have three trails now. Uh, there's mountain bike trails in Denison and Sherman that's run by the NTX group. And then we even have some really good trails out at Tyler out in East Texas. So it's uh, there's a lot of places to ride around yeah. in North Texas. Yeah, all different skill levels too. Absolutely. So that's the great thing about it. Yeah, you can enjoy it with your family uh, or, you know, if you get to another level here and you got the $6,000 bike <laughs> in the background, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you, can, uh, you can go to all different levels. Uh, Garrick, thank you so much for hanging with us. Tell us more about Dorba. I think it's an amazing organization. You know, I, I think we're kind of so lucky to have you guys here and maintain so many trails for us and create such a great riding experience. Well, thank you and just hope everybody, uh, if you want to support the trails, just door, join Dorba at dorba.org and That'll help pay for a lot of this trail maintenance and hopefully continue to open up additional trails in the Metroplex. So. All right, Garrett, thank you very much. Thank you. All right.